Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe the structure of sensory neurons, motor neurons and relay neurons. Now this is the first video on the nervous system topic. There is a lot of detail in this topic so you may need to watch the video several times. Now the nervous system plays a critical role in how we detect and respond to stimuli. Stimuli are changes to the body's internal or external environments. For example, if you accidentally touch a hot object, then the increase in the temperature of your skin would be a stimulus. Stimuli such as this are detected by sensory receptor cells, for example in the skin, and we'll be looking at sensory receptors in a later video. In response to a stimulus, sensory receptor cells generate electrical impulses. These impulses are transmitted by a sensory neuron to the central nervous system, for example the brain or spinal cord. The impulses are now carried by a relay neuron in the central nervous system, and relay neurons are sometimes referred to as intermediate neurons. The relay neuron now transmits the impulses to a motor neuron, and the impulses now pass along the motor neuron to an effector, for example a muscle or a gland. This triggers the effector to carry out a response, for example pulling away from a hot object. So in this video we're looking at the structure of neurons. I'm showing you here the structure of a sensory neuron. Remember that sensory neurons are connected to sensory receptors, and sensory receptors generate electrical impulses in response to a stimulus. All neurons, including sensory neurons, have a cell body, and we can see the cell body here. The cell body contains the nucleus. In the cell body we also find mitochondria and endoplasmic reticulum. These are involved in the synthesis of neurotransmitter molecules. We look at the role of neurotransmitters when we look at synapses in a later video. Now in a sensory neuron the cell body has two extensions. The dendron carries impulses from the sensory receptors towards the cell body. At the end of the dendron we have fine branches called dendrites. The impulses are carried away from the cell body via the axon. So in a sensory neuron we have one dendron and one axon. Now in many neurons we also have a myelin sheath. These are formed by Schwann cells which wrap around the neuron forming many layers of plasma membrane. I'm showing you the Schwann cell wrapped around an axon here. Notice the many layers of plasma membrane forming the myelin sheath around the axon. Now we also have gaps in between the Schwann cells where there's no myelin. These gaps are called the nodes of Ranvier. Now the myelin sheath acts as an electrical insulator and together with the nodes of Ranvier this speeds up the transmission of the electrical impulse. We'll be comparing myelinated versus non-myelinated neurons in a later video. Okay, I'm showing you here a motor neuron. Remember that motor neurons transmit impulses from the central nervous system to effectors. In the case of the motor neuron, the cell body has a number of short dendrites. These dendrites transmit impulses from sensory neurons or from relay neurons towards the cell body of the motor neuron. Now you'll notice that the motor neuron has one long axon extending away from the cell body. The impulse is transmitted down the axon from the cell body to the effector. Here's a relay neuron, and remember that relay neurons are also called intermediate neurons. Relay neurons transmit impulses from sensory neurons to motor neurons. Relay neurons can have multiple short dendrons and short axons. I'm showing you here how the sensory neuron, relay neuron and motor neuron fit together. Impulses are triggered in the sensory receptor and pass down the sensory neuron to the relay neuron. The impulses then pass across the relay neuron to the motor neuron. And finally the impulses pass down the motor neuron to the effector where they trigger the response. I should point out though that sometimes sensory neurons send impulses directly to the brain or directly to a motor neuron. In the next video, we look at the resting potential.